Hey guys and gals, this is Joe East here, and uh, welcome to another episode with me and my coffee shop chats. Cheers. Coffee is a semi-sacramental drink. Lots of meaning behind it. Friends and family chatting over coffee, memories. Cheers, friends. Okay, so this is a big one about, uh, for mainly Saints fans, um, a lot of you guys out there might be uh, football fans. I'm actually not a football fan, but I saw some of uh, uh, what happened after the championship games, and uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to have some of you guys out there uh, question reality now that you have been red pilled, okay? And what is the red pill, right? So let's go over. We're gonna go over some of this stuff um, in this little uh, chat here. I got a pretty good outline ready for you guys. We're gonna have some fun here, um, Saints fans, and um, those of you who watch the Saints game. How you can use this to uh, question your reality. And open your mind a bit. Um, you will find out that most of history is BS. It's misinterpreted. Uh, and we're going to start with uncontroversial um, subjects here first that are BS. And then we're going to move into some of the more controversial things that you might want to take a look at. And uh, research on your own and say, hey, well, what's going on here? You know. All right. So for the Saints game, we can conclude... That the powers that be will break the rules if millions of dollars are at stake. I think that is not questionable anymore. I think the organizations themselves actually admitted it was bullcrap. So now we have fake sports. <laughs> Perhaps we always did. And that's what I, where I want you to think about is that perhaps there always was fake sports. It's just... This time they got caught. But they got caught and did they fix it? <laughs> no, because they have the power not to fix it because they run the show, okay? All right, so let's call this a crack in your Matrix. So if you recall the Matrix movie, Neo... And Morpheus are talking, and Morpheus offers him the red pill or the blue pill. The blue pill, you take the blue pill, you go back to normal reality, and you never knew what was happening, and you believe everything you already believed, and you don't know anything better, but you take the red pill of truth. You're not guaranteed anything but the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But first it will piss you off. Okay, so red pill, blue pill. So that's what we mean by red pill and blue pill. We don't mean anything other than that. Uh, I know there's some uh, context uh, in politics where it means something, but this is the original meaning of the red pill. It is the truth. The hardcore truth, sometimes the painful truth, right? Okay, so what other things you see on the screen are fake? You saw this, Saints fans and uh, football fans. You saw this pass interference non-call that changed the entire game, and which changed the entire Super Bowl, which made the game fake and made the Super Bowl fake. Millions and millions of dollars on the line, and it's all fake. None of it is true. It's Yes, it's garbage. And now you know. And that's probably the bitter red pill for some of you sports fans. Is that now you know the truth and you know that there's nothing you can do about it. Other than recognize the truth. That you were screwed. <laughs> Alright, 
So we're not going to uh, gloat over being screwed, but we're going to I want you to feel the pain, but feel the cognitive dissonance in your mind. And let's take that cognitive dissonance and expand on it to other subjects that perhaps you can think about and go way down the rabbit hole. Take the red pill and jump down the rabbit hole. Let's do some more coffee here. Friends, family, acquaintances. <laughs> Hell. Damn, this stuff's good. Uh, pure cream, by the way. If you're going to make it right, make sure that's pure cream. You uh, boil it, say in a microwave or a pot, and you just pour the boiling cream inside there. Okay, so you guys have probably heard of the keto diet. The keto diet is basically a no-carb diet. So back in the 90s, you might have remember the Atkins diet, whereby the government and several organizations said, oh, it's dangerous because it puts you in ketosis. Low-carb diets will put you in ketosis, and that's dangerous. It'll get you a heart attack and all this other crap. Um, that was back before the internet, or perhaps during the dawn of the internet, before we could actually go online and compare notes among people around the world and get a better version of the truth. If we're willing to dig a bit, right? So the keto diet stands for ketogenic. And if you guys remember in the 1990s, the government and various other so-called health organizations said ketosis is extremely dangerous for heart health. Never go in ketosis. However, there are millions upon millions of people that have now gone through the keto diet in ketogenesis. Ketosis, should I say. In ketosis. And have lost weight by eating protein and fat. By eating meat and fat. Meat and fat lose weight. Period. End of discussion. It works. The keto diet works. There's no debate. Period. It works. So therefore, 50 years of so-called fake science has been determined to be, wait for it, the curse words coming. Bullshit. You guys remember uh, the Atkins diet? So that was a low-carb diet, uh, starting at 20 grams and slowly increasing the uh, amount of carbs you take. Uh, it was never a ketogenic diet, but it was close to a ketogenic diet. And many people uh, have actually been successful in the Atkins diet. The Atkins diet is basically uh, fruit, vegetables, uh, and uh Protein and fat, uh, very low carb. Um, so let's review some of the, the idiot diets that were promoted and that are actually evil. So the low-fat diet's evil. It's basically eating frickin' sugar and fruits and vegetables. I mean, give me a break. That's frickin' stupid, right? We all know it's bull crap. Um, Low-fat diet was a lie. It's a criminal lie. It has killed millions. And that's the red pill truth. Uh, the vegan diet. <laughs> Every vegan you know of is probably unhealthy. Unless they are genetically predisposed toward the uh, vegan diet. And they are naturally healthy you know, by genetics. But for the most part, vegan diets are unhealthy. So therefore, diet advice has been criminal over the past more than half century. Criminals, absolute killers, have killed millions promoting the low-fat diet all these years. That is the red pill truth. It is not even deniable. You can't deny it. Anymore, you can't. Because of the keto diet. The keto diet has proved that millions of people can live lose weight, become fit on protein and fat, meat and fat, all right? Low-fat diet's a killer. It'll kill us all. Okay, so let's go to uh, three war events that were faked, or at least uh, not portrayed as they actually were. The Vietnam War, how did it start? The Gulf of Tonkin incident. The Gulf of Tonkin incident is fake. It was a fake. Look it up. The beginning of the Vietnam War that lasted, what, nine years, killed 57,000 American men, 
was started by a fake incident called the Gulf of Tonkin incident. It was fake. World, uh, Gulf War One was a fake start of that war also. You go back to 1991, 1989, or whatever, whenever it was started, there were um, reports of kids thrown out of incubators by Saddam's guys in Kuwait, which made everybody cry. Oh, he's such an evil person. Let's go beat his ass and start war. Okay, so the Gulf War I was started on fake events. The incubators, look it up. It's all fake. Every last freaking bit of it is fake. Not too many people died in that war, though. I think there were a few hundred, perhaps under a hundred. But still, uh, people got killed. Uh, the other side lost hundreds of thousands of men over a fake start of the war. Gulf War II. Ooh. Ooh, we invaded Iraq in 2003, I think it was, over weapons of mass destruction that evil Saddam had. Where are those weapons of mass destruction? It was all fake. Look it up. It was all fake. We faked weapons of mass destruction to invade a country, kill 10,000 U.S. military personnel and millions of Iraqis. Okay? So that's three war incidents that killed either tens of thousands on our side or millions on the other side. I think two million Vietnamese died, I think, in the uh, Vietnam War. Um, I'm not saying we could have possibly justified these wars otherwise. Right? But the way they were sold... To the country was a lie. It was fake. It was a trick. Complete lie. Okay? Vietnam War, Gulf War One, Gulf War Two. Okay, those are not really debatable. We got the records now. It's all, you know, we know the Gulf of Tonkin incident was a fake. We know that Saddam throwing kids out of incubators was a fake, and we know the weapons of mass destruction thing was fake. We know this for a fact. So what are some other questionable things that are kind of on the edge that perhaps, yeah, we can have some debate on it, but the debate is pretty much um, not to, let's put it this way, the controversy is there, but it's we kind of sort of know it was BS, but, you know, the Kennedy assassination. You know, the single lone gunman. How many times have you seen news reports where this was lone gunman took on a crowd of people, a lone gunman shoot up a church, a lone gunman shoot up a school or whatever? There's this goofy meme of a lone gunman. Um, but I think what proved uh, that was a fake uh, during the Kennedy assassination was when um, Jack Ruby shot Lee Harvey Oswald. So that pretty much proved it was a mafia style hit or a secret intelligence hit. So we, we, yeah, you can debate some of this crap, but we all know it's BS. Uh, anybody with a half a brain knows the Kennedy assassination was BS. Uh, it was no lone gunman. That was a conspiracy. Uh, Pearl Harbor. Yeah, we can maybe debate a little bit on that, but, um, there's fresh evidence that we um, baited the Japanese by um, basically embargoing all the oil, forcing them to attack, uh, and basically baiting them to attack so we can get into World War II because uh, we wanted to get in on the fun. Or the British were trying to you know, help us get in on the fun in the World War II. Okay, so check out... The, of course, everybody checks out the Kennedy assassination. We all know it's probably fake. Pearl Harbor, check that out. Check that out. It probably was a, um, a false flag attack or some sort of uh, it, it instigation uh, where we forced Japan to attack because uh, we embargoed their oil. So they were basically going to starve to death or go to war with us and say, hey, we're not going to starve. We're going to try to fight you. Okay, so anyway, that's the argument. 
uh, and we all know some of this might be debatable, but check out the Pearl Harbor incident. World War II. Now, this might piss some of you guys off out there, but I mean, we know what we're talking about here. I'm very well versed in history, and um, you can't fool me on this sort of stuff very easily. So the World War II was that the argument was we went out there and kicked Hitler's ass. Really? Did we kick Hitler's ass? Hmm. So what was the major effort from the United States and uh, the British Empire to take on Hitler? It was the invasion of Normandy, right? Okay. Everyone knows that the turning point in World War II was the Battle of Stalingrad. That's where the Russians stopped Hitler at the Battle of Stalingrad and said, no, we will not retreat, not one step back. The Russians said, no, Hitler, F you, we're dying right here or we're going to beat your ass. So the Battle of Stalingrad was the biggest and bloodiest battle in history. More men, more people died in the Battle of Stalingrad than any other battle in history. It was the biggest battle in history. The Russians beat Hitler and began to drive him back. Now, that was that's the story behind the Battle of Stalingrad. But what you need to pay close attention to, for those of you who do not believe me, are the history dates. The Battle of Stalingrad lasted from uh, August of 1942 to February of 1943. When did we invade Normandy? Check the dates. June of 1944. A year and a half after the decisive battle of World War II was fought, the United States and the British Empire invaded Normandy, France. Okay, so a year and a half after World War II was pretty much over with, we joined the war. Now, we were taught, perhaps, that we kicked Hitler's ass. And the truth is, for better or for worse, the Russians, the Soviet Union, kicked Hitler's ass. That's the truth, folks. We came in as a mop-up operation on the Western Front mainly to keep uh, the Russians from having control over all of Europe. Um, but no. Uh, check the casualties. We only lost about 400 somewhat thousand uh, killed men totally in World War II, uh, roughly a half a million. And look at the casualty rates of the Russians and the Germans. We didn't do much in World War II. Um, Look it up. Look it up. Uh, we came in, like I said, a year and a half after the decisive battle of Stalingrad. So we basically had the Nazis and the communists duke it out, fight it out. And then after the damage was done, we came in as a mop-up operation on the Western Front. That's World War II, guys. Check the dates. Check the casualties. Yeah. Um... 9-11, the attack on the towers. I think most of you probably saw the planes hit the towers, right? And it, there's, you know, we can understand perhaps that the two towers fell because we saw two planes hit the towers. But there's one odd thing you want to look up. Again, don't believe me. Look it up. World Trade Center 7. Tower number 7. A building of 47 stories tall also collapsed. It was not hit by a plane. World Trade 7 fell. 47 stories collapsed. Just like World Trade 1 and World Trade 2, this tower fell. Collapsed. It looks like a demolition. Anyway, so uh, I'm not telling you to believe me here. I'm telling you to check it out, World Trade 7, and check out uh, videos of buildings being demolished and compare demolished buildings using dynamite to uh, the 911 building collapses. Just check it out. 
You don't need to believe this stuff. Just check it out and see if you find something odd. Or you're being lied to. Ooh. All right. Smoking kills. Smoking's gonna kill ya. Maybe it will. Maybe it might increase your chances of an early death. Who knows? But um, George Burns, look him up. He lived to 100. He smoked cigars until he died, probably. We even saw him, right? So there's this, you know, smoking kills thing. But what about cigar smokers, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, check it out. Again, th this is just stuff for you to check out. The red pill, my Saints fans, <laughs> my, my football fanatics. Check this stuff out. Just do some Google searches and go to YouTube and look it up. Okay, so we've, you know, heard success is following the rules, or is success breaking the rules? Ooh. Famous athletes. Do they bend the rules? Do they take drugs? Do they take things they're not supposed to take? And are the referees paid to look the other way? Because there's so much money on the line. Well, look up the reports on Lance Armstrong and his team and what they did for several years, several years. Check it out. And then ask yourself the question, how many others didn't get caught? All right. Check it out. Lance Armstrong and what his team did for the longest time. And he got caught. Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard. Steve Jobs never went to a famous school. Um, and these are cliches, right? Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. But among the very successful people, the trend tends to be entrepreneurial, where they actually put themselves out there at risk tried things over and over again until suddenly they struck gold. That's the rules of, those are the rules of success in general, is to put yourself out there, take risks, play to win, and don't stop swinging. That's basically the rule of success. Not following the rules, not freaking getting good grades, it's not getting a, a certificate it's playing to win. Don't stop swinging. Don't stop until you get your gold. That's the only rule for success. Um, perhaps some of you guys or girls have been through family court. Let's say you followed all the rules, you know, your church rules or your society's rules of getting your diplomas, your certificates, whatever. And then suddenly you end up in family court. Does anybody think that was fair? Does anybody think they were fairly treated in family court? Either side. Anybody thinks they were treated fair in family court? Hmm? You think? Nope. Kids, are they ever treated fair? Family court? Hmm. Doctors and lawyers. If you grew up in a working class sort of family, you might have looked up to doctors and lawyers. Uh, lawyers <laughs> don't make lawyers don't make much money. Uh, and doctors are perhaps right at the middle of the middle class. They're not even upper middle class doctors, unless they're famous surgeons. So yeah, I mean, you can become a doctor, a lawyer, and still middle class. It's a status symbol for people who are either working class or middle class to have this doctor thing. So yeah, doctors and lawyers don't make that much money. They don't. They're just middle class uh, salary uh, uh, wage slaves, doctors and lawyers. And those who make uh, successes actually leave their profession and do something else. If you're a lawyer and you become rich, it's because you're not because you're a lawyer. It's because you did something else. Uh, corporate jobs, you know, just be a company man for 30 years and then retire. Well... How many companies have screwed over employees by firing them right before they retire and steal all their all their retirement funds? And then the guy who was loyal and followed the rules did what he was supposed to do all these years, gets screwed. 
right? Saints fans, sports fans, Saints fans, sports fans. Okay. Remember the Donald Trump election <laughs> the day before Hillary was uh, writing her victory speech and everybody was fixing the break of the new glass ceiling of a woman becoming president and those of us who actually were digging into the numbers said, hmm, if Ohio comes through or some of the Midwestern states, that ain't going to happen. And of course, we all know what happened during the election. Those of you who are actually watching the numbers, the Electoral College, knew that Trump had a damn good chance of winning. And if he played hard and mean, he was going to win. But what were you told, those of you who are not numbers people and those of you who don't pay attention to politics or the electrical, electoral college, what were you told the day before? What were you told the day before? It was inevitable. It was inevitable that the woman Hillary would break that glass ceiling and become the first female president. You were fooled. You were lied to. You followed the rules and you got screwed. By the way, those of you who are Democrats, um, look up the story of Bernie Sanders and how he got screwed out of the nomination to the Democrat, uh, to be the Democrat nominee. All right, so what can we learn here? Um, a lot of things we were perhaps taught by the official authorities or you know, those who are supposed to look up to are all BS, at least in the past 50 years, at least since the 1950s, after World War II, pretty much everything was BS. It was propaganda mills uh, funded by the CIA and several other secret intelligence agencies and corporations to um, create a docile animal-like population that wasn't healthy enough to thrive, but yet wasn't sick enough to die to where they can feed you tons of carbohydrates at a high rate of margin and profit, and then profit off the back end as you get diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. They make money selling you the crap that you ate as so-called food, which wasn't food, it was actually poison. I mean, the foods for, for the low-fat diet and the high-carb diet is basically cardboard and sugar, more or less. Just sugar or cardboard and sugar. It's, you know, it's just trash. Animals don't even eat that crap. Um, but we, we did back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And in the 90s, we started waking up a little bit. But yeah, so um, they make money off of feeding you the garbage, the cardboard and sugar, and then they make money off of the drugs they sell back to you for heart, so-called heart disease, so-called diabetes, so-called cancer, and these drugs that are supposedly uh, the antidote to these things, which most of them aren't. They're bull crap. Uh, Lipitor. I mean... I, don't get me started on that stuff. <laughs> All right, so I guess um, take this as an opportunity, sports fans, Saints fanatics, Saints fans, to question everything you were taught, experiment, try stuff, because winners always find a way to win no matter what. No excuses. There's no excuses not to win. And you just got to have the attitude to go out there and freaking win against all odds. Winners find a way to win no matter what. Take the red pill. Go out there and win. That's it. You're going to lose sometimes. You're going to win sometimes. But play to win. That's what winners do. Play to win. Is that, my friends? This is the end of this little talk. Hopefully you're Saints fans. Or thinking a little bit more about the matrix and the red pill and the blue pill. Cheers. Let's have another sip of coffee and we'll close this out.
Thanks for watching. You guys take care out there. Stay safe and keep on winning. Don't stop swinging.